Hello good people, I'm Dimitri and this is an absolutely unique product, the HP Omen Mind Frame. The naming scheme is awesome, the packaging is good, although there are absolutely no accessories, you just get the headset itself. And I feel like this is HP's way of experimenting with the market to see if this whole cooling situation will stick. So the concept here is that we have thermal electrical coolers inside each ear cup, therefore cooling your ears, so if your ears get warm, uh, if you're in a really warm environment, then HP is trying to tackle that with actively cooling your ears uh, so you can wear this headset and not get any heat accumulation. And as a concept and idea, it's pretty awesome while also kind of like flying by in that gimmicky territory. I am excited to see if this will stick in the gaming sphere or it will be simply swept aside as too gimmicky. So let's review right after this. Evolve with the times, consider NVMe storage today. The new RC100 brings affordable NVMe storage into your hands with various capacities in this super compact form factor that plugs directly into your motherboard. It's extremely power efficient and utilizes Toshiba's advanced 3D flash memory for awesome speeds so you can be a happy user. The RC100 by Toshiba, the NVMe drive to consider. Check it out below. All right, guys, so for the past two weeks, I've been using this headset and trying to get into the mindset of HP, trying to understand exactly why this exists. So it's a pretty standard gaming headset for $200, very expensive, uh, although it does go on sale quite often for $150, still quite expensive for that sale price anyway. In terms of build quality, it's fairly plastic, uh, it does creak a little bit when the ear cups are moving. It has this self-adjusting headband up top. It is kind of like a pleather material, so it, it should fit larger head sizes and uh, accommodate smaller head sizes as well. I am concerned about the red exposed cable on each side. It is uh, slightly bent already, and I'm not sure about its longevity. But like I said, I feel like this is HP's way of experimenting with the market and not necessarily you know, being super proud of this headset. I find them pretty comfortable, but they are extremely heavy at 475 grams compared to much lighter designs like the GSP 500, which is still a pretty bulky design, but much lighter at 358 grams. And my favorite pair of all for gaming and editing, the HD 58X at 260 grams. We have a volume dial on the right ear cup, nicely accessible. The ear cushions are pretty deep, not irritating, pretty comfortable, but they're not removable. And of course, RGB lighting on the sides, but uh, you know, it's tasteful, nice uh, ambient illumination. Uh, of course, it wouldn't be a gaming headset without it. The microphone is muted when in the upright position, you can see the red LED. It is pretty flexible, but in terms of sound quality, it is just okay. So this is what the microphone sounds like. It's a little bit disappointing, so there's a lot of noise in the background. In terms of the vocal compression, it's kind of nasally, it's not too detailed and uh, overall a little bit of a disappointment. And also when you mute the microphone, there's a beep that also mutes the audio incoming. So uh, it's quite annoying if you have to mute it up, you will lose your audio for a brief second. This is the GSP 500, the headset that is over $200, but you can hear the difference in terms of audio quality uh, for the microphone and the vocals, just a lot more body and richer sound. So yeah and the headset is connected via USB with a braided cable that doesn't kink easy and also doesn't pass too much cabling noise when it's brushing against your shirt into the ear cup, which is great. And so the whole point of this headset is the cooling on the interior of what HP calls frost cap. It's their branding terms for a thermoelectrical cooler, which means there are two semiconductor layers. So when voltage passes through one of them, it carries the heat away from one to the other. And so that's what we have here. We have a cooler side on the interior and the warmer heatsink type on the exterior inside the RGB illumination. And it actually works in terms of cooling. So I can put my fingers over here and feel like I'm touching really cold metal. And that's pretty incredible. So if your ears do, you know, sweat, that is a really good mitigation strategy. And you can also uh, adjust the low to medium to high settings in the software, which is pretty good. And based on our FLIR readings, the maximum temperature or the minimum temperature we can achieve at maximum uh, cooling setting is about 12 degrees Celsius. And that is really cool uh, in terms of the feature set and also the temperature. And so for the first time I put these on, I had the cooling capacity on high setting and I could feel the cold being radiated from the drive walls onto my ears, you know, literally cooling whatever was inside the ear cup. And that is exactly what this headset is intended to do. But multiple things to consider. My ears are actually more sensitive to cold, so I couldn't 
keep them on for a long time because my ears got like too cold, I had to take them off. Right now it's like fall, so not necessarily needed. Uh, and number two, if uh, your ears are potentially slightly uh, larger or like stick out a bit more, you might run into risk of making contact with that wall, which is what Eber experienced. And therefore it could be an extremely unpleasant experience of physically feeling that cold wall, which is 12 degrees Celsius, uh, and therefore just not uh, having a good time at all. And the side effect is that warm plate on the exterior, which is basically a heat sink that takes away the heat from the internal plate. Um, and it's kind of strange handling a headset that is warm on the outside, but extremely cool inside the ear cups. And um, HP warns that there might be condensation forming on the interior, depending on the ambient temperature. And this whole cooling thing works like it should. It's not a gimmick. We have literally a cooler inside the ear cup that uh, passes on, you know, you can feel the cooling kind of like radiating from that aluminum plate and uh, it would it should cool your ears no problem I don't need that because I have headphones that are open back and therefore never have any heat concentration uh, and for even the headsets that are totally closed back you might have some concentration of heat uh, where the leather makes contact with your skin but my ears are never in that zone where like they they sweat uh, on the exterior, on the inside. So for me, this whole thing makes absolutely no sense, but let me know if this is something that you might actually find useful. And now the reason why I think this is an experimentation product is because the driver software is so basic. First, it takes forever to load and we only have the RGB uh, selection and the cooling selection with those three profiles and absolutely nothing about the sound. And it's weird because this is a USB headset. It also has the surround sound enabled by default. Normally for USB headsets, you'd have uh, stereo mode and some form of EQ profile customization and then surround sound uh, toggle, but this one has neither. And weirdly, when you go into device properties, enable the Windows Sonic for headphones, it makes absolutely no difference to the sound signature of this headset. So you're kind of locked into what HP wants you to hear. And you know, I actually don't mind the sound signature profile of this headset. Uh, it's very crystal clear, lots of detail, not harsh treble either. The bass is kind of like, it's deep, but it could have a slightly deeper impact. Uh, the mid range is clear. It's like, you know, it's slightly open, but not too airy. So like, I actually like the sound signature of this, but the issue is having absolutely no customization. And that is strange for a USB headset. For example, I recently started playing Escape from Tarkov, a game where you have to absolutely listen to everything that's happening in your environment, listen to footsteps, where they're coming from, the actual profile of where those footsteps are coming from in terms of are they stepping on glass, wood or metal. And I had absolutely no issues detecting all those uh, elements in my surround environment. And I think uh, the HP mind frame Pretty well. But of course, for a $200 price point, you'd expect more, like slightly deeper bass that is a little bit more controlled and not too open. Uh, and of course, all those EQ profiles so you can tone down the treble if uh, you find it too harsh. Uh, and you know, do all types of customization that we're so used to. Now I'm going to let Eber chime in on this conversation so you can get an opinion from both me and him. Eber, take it away. Design and build quality. It's a complete disappointment, especially for a $200 headset. I wasn't expecting a plastic frame that actually creaks, uh, which is really unfortunate. I have big ears, so as soon as I wear these headset, they do get in contact with the drivers inside. And as soon as I crank up the cooling uh, to max setting, which is the only way to control it through the driver software, there are no hardware buttons on this headset, which is kind of unfortunate. It gets really cold. It almost gets to a point where uh, it's almost, you're, you're feeling you're, you're touching like an aluminum surface first thing in the morning, it, it's, it's that cold. All right guys, so that is the Omen Mind Frame, a super cool name for a product by the way, uh, that has like kind of a gimmicky feature but that actually works in cooling your ears. And the only drawbacks are the rest of the headset. You know, in terms of build quality, it's extremely heavy, it's kind of plasticky. Uh, so I'm guessing a lot of that weight is with that thermoelectrical cooler that's uh, stuck inside the ear cups. Sound quality is actually pretty good, the microphone for a USB headset is fine as well, but the price is not competitive. But of course, I'm guessing there is that price premium because of that TEC built in to cool your ears. This is not something I would recommend, but I'm guessing for a really hot environment where you do get that heat concentration stuck, uh, that cooling, that active cooling would definitely prevent any heat concentration, which is awesome. But also you have to think about the actual headset design. 
uh, because going with an open back headset usually have absolutely no heat concentration because it is totally open like my HD 58X, even in the summer, absolutely no issues. And I'm actually excited to try this out as well in a hotter environment, uh, just to see if this would make a difference. All right, guys, I'm Dimitri with Hardware Connects. Let me know what you think of this whole concept of cooling your ears in a gaming headset. I know it sounds gimmicky, but I'm happy that uh, HP has made it work and it's not like some some fans are spinning inside your ear cups. But yeah, check out this other relevant content. Subscribe to a new boot sequence channel. Thanks to E for the little collaboration. And we'll see you next video.